Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Thursday morning, uh, November the 18th. It is 8.36. Yeah, 8.36 in the morning. Um, I'm going to kind of sway off our usual routine today. And what we're going to do, we're going to start off with um, a psalm. And then we're going to walk through my notes. We have not taken a walk through my notes. And it is time to take a walk through these notes. Because there's always very good information to share with you. Okay. So let's start with the first sound saying. What is this? Oh. is coming from Psalm 4, 3, and it says, But know that the Lord has set a part that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Yes, God always sets his servants apart for himself. Now, oftentimes, these servants do not know they have been called to duty until the time comes for a perfect example god will select among the people of the earth and oftentimes he will select someone that everyone else on earth will find difficult to accept and let's talk about um paul paul from sarkis was so one of the chosen ones chosen by God he was uh, not on his team <laughs> he was going around um, harassing intimidating the Christians those that belong to God he was actually on his way to do that in Damascus when the Lord himself met him in Damascus and um, the wonderful thing about that particular meeting was that when the Lord did speak to Saul, he knew exactly who he was speaking to because of how he answered him, okay? And in, on top of that, uh, the Lord did blind a man and sent him to another servant, Anais, to touch his eyes and... Uh, have him gain a portion of his eyesight. Paul, from that encounter, did not really gain his full eyesight. He gained enough for him to be able to see, but not as it was initially before he had his encounter with Christ. So that's just one example of someone who um, uh, the world had a difficult time accepting uh, that he had been chosen because even Anias said <laughs> Anias had some apprehension about going to meet this man because he had a reputation prior to uh, his meeting with Christ. But nonetheless, Anias was an obedient servant and he did go and uh, touch the eyes of, um, of Saul. And his name was transferred, to, transformed to Paul, as we know him today in the Bible. So that's just one example of an individual that God selected and called. So he had actually saved this man long ago. It, uh, sometimes he chooses them in the wound, as John the Baptist. Uh, and sometimes he chooses them outside of the wound. Okay. But in any case... Uh, whenever the Lord chooses a servant, they always operate differently than the preferred servants are of the time, uh, as the ones today operate differently than the mega pastors that are highly favored. Okay, but know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him, and he does. Um, the back is coming from Philippians 4, 9. It says, the God of peace shall be with you. And he is the God of peace and mercy and unfailing love. 
Uh, the God of peace will be with you always. So, uh, Philippians 4, 9. All right, now let's <clears throat> go into the introduction, which is always the psalm. This is Psalms um, 39. It is a psalm of David. It is a... short psalm it only has 13 it's a short song it only has 13 verses so let's begin i say i will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin amen i will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin that means you will watch what you do and why you do it and your tongue this small little organ inside your mouth you will also watch how you use that as well why not for any other purpose other than to please God in all your ways? You must always be um, mindful of your motives and why you're doing it. <clears throat> and your motives, can, your motives should never be selfish. If you come to help a, a offer aid to an individual or offer aid to uh, a family, you are not just coming to help because there are children there or something like that. You are coming to help the entire family. You do it for the whole family. You, you just don't do it because there are children there. You do it for both the children and for the adults in the family. You understand? Okay. Uh, I said I will wash my waist and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. Yes, uh, putting a muzzle on your mouth means that you will not exchange blows for blows, insult for insult. Why? Because you must watch your motives and what comes out of your mouth. It, it doesn't matter who's in front of you. It could be the wicked in front of you, breathing fire like dragons, but you in turn must deal with them according to the ways you know will please God. Okay, and it doesn't make no difference how it may make you look uh, at the time that this is happening. Sometimes when you don't respond to people the way that they expect for you, you are looked upon as a coward. But God knows your heart. You have no one to please but him. Okay, so don't be concerned about how you look. Be more concerned about how your actions look in the eyes of God. Period. Okay, so that's why you must put a muzzle on this piece here. Okay, that's why when you see your president, you must not say cruel and disrespectful things unto him. No matter what he's doing, you cannot say F you Biden. Okay? Because why? You you must keep your tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still and not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. Yes, it will. <laughs> you will be boiling inside. Yes, it will. But the more and more you do this, the better you become at it. Practice makes perfect. Yes. So the more and more you learn to muzzle your mouth, the easier it becomes as you implement this form of conduct. But when I was silent and still, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me, and eh? yes, this will happen. You're only human, okay? But God will give you the what? Strength, because that's what you need when you are muzzling yourself. You need strength, spiritual strength, and that he will provide. My heart grew hot within me, and as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. 
The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Selah. Amen. Uh, it may seem like you're here for long, but it's simply a breath, a moment. Man is mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. Why should you care? What happens to your wealth when you are no longer here? What you should care about is who gets your wealth. And that is those that God has given you are entitled to their parents' wealth, period. If you have no children, then it goes to your next of kin, according to the book. It never goes to an organization. If you have family that are still living on earth, it goes to them. It never goes to an organization. It never, you never in, take your inheritance and give it to a dog. As, as, as it's been done. Show me, O oh Lord, my life and, and, and the number of my days and know, and let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand bread, the spin of my years as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath, Selah. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you, amen. Save me in all my transgressions, amen. Do not make me the scorn of fools, amen. I was silent, I will not open my mouth. For you are the one who has done this, amen. He is the only one who is capable of controlling that peace called your tongue. So when you are silent, it is the Lord that is controlling it. <laughs> not you. <laughs> okay, so I was silent. I will not open my mouth for you are the one who has done this. Okay, uh, remove your scarf from me. I am overcome by the blows of your hand. You rebuke and discipline men for their sins. Yes, sweet. Yes, he does. You consume their wealth like a moth. Yes, he does. Each man is but a breath. Selah. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not death to my weeping, for I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me that I may rejoice again before I depart and am no more. Amen, amen, amen. And that is all 13 verses of Psalms 39. Now let's walk through my notes really quick. This is going to be an obviously short taping. And I have another sound saying to share with you, coming from Psalms again, 92.13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Uh, Psalm 66.20. Blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. Blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Okay. The last time we shared, I believe we stopped at, we are talking about the disciples of Christ. We were talking about Peter. So let's continue with that. Peter is also known for denying Christ three times after Christ was arrested. After his own arrest, many years later, he requested to be crucified with his head down. He didn't believe he was worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord. He died a murder death in Rome during the range of Nero. Some speculated around the same time as Paul was being beheaded. Yes, Paul was beheaded. Um, Andrew. Andrew, Peter's brother, an early disciple of John the Baptist. Andrew and John, the son of Zebedee, were present when John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. In John 1.35, Andrew was the first to follow Jesus and his 
enthusiasm was evident as he's, his desire to introduce his older brother to Jesus revealed what was already in his heart, a deep love for God. He was not a dominant person next to his brother. He was a passionate preacher and shared the gospel boldly and was a significant contributor to the early church. Andrew died a murder death. He uh, faced crucifixion and but with boldness as he was walking to, to the cross, he said, oh, cross most welcome and longed for exclamation mark with a willing mind. Uh, joyfully and desirely, I come to you uh, being a scholar of him which did hang on you because I have always been your lover and yearn to embrace you. So he welcomed walking. He, he welcomed uh, walking towards that cross for his crucifixion. James and John, sons of Zebedee, these, uh, uh, there is some evidence that Zebedee was a man of affluence. He was able to hire enough servants to help with his fishing business in Mark 120. That speaks of it. Mark 120 says, and straight away he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the ship and the hired help servants and went after him. So um, some uh, most most people that God was Jesus would say follow me would just stop what they were doing and just followed him. There were some who who responded in a way he did not like. Uh, one man wanted to go and bury his family and do this and that. And, you know, somebody else wanted to do something else. No. When the Lord asks you to come his way, you're supposed to stop what you're doing and go. Okay. Um, in scripture, James is listed below his younger brother, John. Yet he remained somewhat obscure except for the fact that he is part of Jesus' inner circle. John is much more in the forefront of what is happening during the three years of the training with Christ. James and John were both known for being men of intense passion and um, fair, fair. Um, because of this, Jesus nicknamed them the Sons of Thunder. This was the name given to these two gentlemen by our Lord. Jesus Christ, and it is spoken of in three, Mark 3, 17. It says, in James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boranus, which is the sons of thunder. Boranergus, I'm sorry, Boranergus, sons of thunder. Okay, James is the elder brother of John. He is a rather quiet part of the team of disciples in that uh, we don't know much about him in scripture. He's part of Jesus' inner three circles. He was permitted to be present along with Peter and John when Jesus uh, rose Zarius' daughter from the dead. That is spoken of in Mark 5, 37. Virtue. Virtue is a conformity of life and conduct with the principles of morality, something that is uh, very low today. The, the conduct of the people on earth today are repulsive in the sight of God and in the sight of many of his saints and servants. Mark 5, 35, while he yet spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue how certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Uh, why trouble thou the master any further? And Mark 5, 36 says, As soon as Jesus heard, the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, and this is in all uppercase lettering, be not afraid, only believe. So uh, that is the important part of believing Christ and trusting in God. You must believe that God is able to uh, fulfill whatever request you are asking. He is able. No matter how difficult it may be, he is able. No matter what the doctors are telling you, he is able. Amen. Uh, Mark 5.37 says, And he suffered no man to follow him, save, save Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James. So uh, he was especially, Jesus was especially close to these three men. That's why they were at the forefront, 
Okay, they were constantly with him, even at the transfiguration. Okay, Mark 5, 36, and he came, cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the turmoil in them that wept and wailed greatly. Mark 5, 39, and when he was in the, uh, when he was, came, and he saith unto them, um, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Uh, Mark 5, 40, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the, mother, the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. Five, Mark 5, 41, and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitia Kuma, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Okay, I'm highlighting this so that I know that I, we have already touched base on that. Five, uh, Mark 5, 42, and straight away the damsel arose and, and walked, uh, for she was of the age of 12 years, and she was astonished, and they were astonished with great astonishment. <laughs> God, Jesus was always doing something that to astonish you and it will be great when he tells you to go and do what you, what Moses said you are to do that was easy to do but sometimes Jesus will ask you to do the unthinkable he will say say nothing tell no one how is this possible when 38 years you've been laying on a cot you meet the man named Jesus. He tells you to get up and walk. Okay, now you hold, you're up on your feet. You're holding your car. And what did he say to you? Say nothing. Tell no. <laughs> it's impossible. And the man was incapable of doing it. He told everyone he knew. <laughs> okay, Mark 5, 43 and he charged them strictly that no man should know it and commanded them that something should be given her to eat. So it depends on who it was. Maybe these parents might have been too afraid to tell somebody. <laughs> but some was just too excited and had to tell somebody. Okay, this was uh, we're going into Monday, November the 9th, 2020. Uh, this was 11, 18 a.m. Provoked. To incite anger, arouse, encourage, fire up, spark, stir. This is what's happening with the media and those that come out and protest for nothing. Okay, provocation, action or speech that makes someone annoyed or angry, especially deliberately. And everything that is done today that is wicked is done deliberately. Uh, despise, rebel against, by, bathe to command, order, or direct. Despise. When you despise someone, you rebel against them. And right now, uh, the rebellion is against God himself. Um, and if you rebel against God, you will not respect man. That goes hand in hand. If you turn, back on, turn your back on God, man will not be able to do anything with the people on earth. They will, go, they will become ignorant, disrespectful, rebellious, rioters, and there will be all kinds of chaos on earth when we turn our back on God. When we turn back towards God, then we get that which we long for, peace and harmony on earth, period. It's the only way to get it. We can't give peace unto ourselves. No, you can't. Joy, we can't give it to ourselves. It has to come from God. In the same way, we cannot look up and say, rain, and it drops. No. That's also out of the rim or control of man. The climbing, that too, is out of our control. Okay, breach. An act of breaking or failing to observe a law, agreement, or code of conduct. And this is what we're doing when we're attempting to re, uh, defund the police. Okay, and when you start talking about defunding the police, it's time to arm up, period. 
unbelief, lack of religious belief, absence of faith, atheism, cynicism, disbelief, doubt, skepticism, godlessness, all of that leads to mayhem on earth. Genesis 2.27, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to who? His wife. A man should not leave his father and mother and hold fast to who? What? Another man. That is an abomination. Therefore, a man should leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. A wife should not leave her father and mother's house to go and lay with a woman. And they shall become one flesh. In order for you to become one flesh, there must be a man and a woman. Period. A two of the same sex is called an abomination. 1 Corinthians 7, 2. But because of the temptation of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman have her own husband. Matthew 19, 4 to 6. He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Yes, he created the man before he created the female. So we can never be equal to our brothers. Period. That's why our brothers are made the keepers, the providers, the head of the household. You cannot be equal. Never. This is this world's foolishness. He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore a man shall lead, leave his family and his mother and hold fast to who? His wife and the two shall become one flesh. So in order for you to be considered one flesh in the sight of God, it must be first a man and a woman, period. Okay, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. So if you do anything to separate this that God has put together, a curse will be upon thee. And it will be a terrible curse indeed. Genesis 1, 27. So God created, and this is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you this because there are many times when family members counsel and they give wicked counsel. And that wicked counsel does what? It separates the two that God has put together. God will not hold you guiltless for that at all. The punishment that you receive will be so great that you yourself will be baffled by it. I know an old woman who did all she could to separate a couple. Okay? And the lady, the wife, had respected her all of her days. Never yelled at her or disrespected her or talked back to her. This is the one who she interfered in that marriage with that same woman was also a saint of the Lord. Okay. And when someone bows down their knees with tears and supplications over something that you have done to them. And if it causes them, if it causes any kind of, any kind of, Serious problem that makes that marriage disseminate. That individual will pay for it dearly. For the last 18 years of that lady's life, she laid on her back. Every spoonful that came to her mouth had to be given unto her. Every, every time she needed a bathe, it had to be done for her. 
She could do nothing. That is the price you pay. For separating that God has put together. I tell you that so I can put fear in your heart. So you will not take part in such wickedness. If you cannot give them good counsel, then please don't give them counsel at all. Please. <clears throat> uh oh, I gotta end it. Uh, I'll give you one more. We'll stop at this end. Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. All right. And that is all for today. Now we know that we have to start here with Hebrews. Uh, and it's also talking about marriage. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you. May the will of God for you, for me, and for his earth be manifested. Uh, as always, I love you. Um, God loves you more and you make his day. When you take the time to listen to his word given unto us way back in the days of Moses. These words are still very powerful words indeed. And there's nothing in life that man can deal with that is not written in this book called the Bible. Okay, which means basic information before leaving earth. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And hopefully I'll talk to you again tomorrow.